Hey guys, the Woodcraftsman here, and I was going to talk a little bit today about uh, some tooling that I use here. And uh, basically it's called insert tooling. Okay, I just wanted to point out here the difference between traditional braze tooling versus insert tooling. Traditional braze tooling, the carbide tips are held in place by the means of brazing. Uh, they typically will use some type of a bronze or copper or some type of a soft metal to adhere the, cop the carbide tip to the steel body. Versus insert tooling, the carbide inserts are held in place by the means of a gib with some set screws or the insert might have holes in it, uh, through holes, and usually some cap screws with usually like a brass washer in front of it or behind it actually to hold the tip in place. Uh, one of the big advantages over insert tooling versus braze tooling is if you were to break a tip, you could replace a single tip just with a couple minutes of downtime and replacing the insert. Uh, versus braze tooling, if you bust the tip, you have to send the whole cutter or cutter set back to a sharpening service and have them replace and resharpen. The other advantage over insert tooling is, especially for style and rail sets or cope and stick sets, that uh, the typical braze tooling sets, the more you sharpen them, the tighter they fit. Versus with an insert set, if you don't like the way the inserts are cutting, you can typically just throw them away and buy new ones uh, for a little bit more than what it costs to resharpen. The one other thing I would like to point out is that when it comes to sharpening, carbide inserts uh, for insert tooling can be resharpened, but typically because of the cost of the inserts and versus cost of sharpening, sometimes it doesn't always weigh out to be the best uh, deal. However, uh, sharpening a brazed uh, style and rail set or cope and stick set might cost you 40 or $50, but after several sharpenings, you end up throwing the entire set away. So you spend $700 on a style and rail set and might get four to six sharpenings out of it and then you have to buy a whole new set again. Versus insert tooling, once you buy the heads, you just buy the replacement tips. I was going to show you a couple of different variations insert tooling. Um, this is the stuff I just recently started using. I'm slowly adding it to my collection. But this is tooling made by a manufacturer in Granger, Indiana called Dimensions in Tooling. Basically, this company, um, Dimensions and Tooling, also known as DIT, they manufacture um, tooling for molders, shapers, and some other small machining applications. Um, and basically, they specifically make kind of custom tooling at more so stock prices. Um, this particular cutter head here is a raised panel head. Um, it looks awfully big and beefy. It is big. But it is only a little over about six and a half inches in diameter, an uh, inch and a quarter bore, and this is a dedicated profile. Um, the set that I'll be showing you a little bit later is a multi-profile, but I was just kind of going to show, show you a little bit of the differences between the, the different types of cutters that are out there, and kind of more so what I prefer and what I've been finding it works well. Um, this collection here, again, is made by a company called Dimensions and Tooling. And these I had gotten off of an auction, basically I got them for pennies on the dollar. And I was fortunate that I had heard about the manufacturer. I had started to recognize the part numbers that they have engraved um, or laser etched into the heads. And after talking with the manufacturer, all the tips are readily available. And um, uh, the cost is extremely reasonable. I want to say that replacement inserts for a style and rail head are around $15 a piece. And uh, inserts for a raised panel head are a little less than, a little bit uh, less than 20, about 1975, somewhere around there. Um, now I have run all these heads before. Um, I've stacked these on my uh, Powermatic 27S with the coping sled and the outboard fence, and I will tell you that these ran smoother than the set that I used to use, which is the LRH Enterprises. Um, the, these, they've got some mass to them. But actually talking with the manufacturer on redesigning a new raised panel cutter for five-piece drawer fronts, I was telling him you know, how much I really enjoyed how smooth these ran. And the one thing that he told me was everything on a cutter is basically in the bore. You can drill all the divots for balancing all you want, but if the bore is too big compared to your spindle, you're going to actually have some excessive run out around the rim. Um, on the Powermatic 27s with the inch and a quarter solid, these just slip over perfectly. They're not too tight. They're not too loose. I did take a caliper and uh, I read the inside. 
It was probably uh, 1.248 to 247, and on my LRH set it was 1.256 to 1.258, so it was probably about 10 thousandths, if not more, larger. And with the LRH set, I had to sit there while I'd stack the two style rail cutters, have to turn them a little bit, try it again, get some excessive vibration, turn them some more. And really, by turning it, it didn't have any effect on it, it was more so just the positioning as far as the shifting on the spindle. So, um, from what I'm understanding, talk with the manufacturers that they are a custom tool manufacturer. They do, they do have some for say stock profiles of some readily available, but um, what they're basically telling me is that everything they do is pretty much made to order. They don't really stock anything, but all the profiles that they have for their quote unquote stock are basically ready to machine uh, per your order. Uh, the one thing you might notice is the diameter of these style rail cutters. Um, this is a four and three quarter outside diameter with a minor diameter of three and three quarter. And what I liked about this company was is they kind of keep a lot of similarities. Uh, looks to be that for the most part on a lot of the custom tooling I gotten that they're running a minor diameter of three and three quarters. So what that means is when I stack my two cutters for coping and sticking that they're always going to cut the same way. And I found this when stacking the other sets as well because I got about five different profiles and they work extremely well. So I'm very excited to say that this set of tooling that I have from Dimensions and Tooling is very very well worth the money even if you had to buy it new. I want to say a new style and rail set is about $700 for a dedicated profile or even if you did a multi-profile. Um, the way they kind of do a multi-profile um, style and rail set is basically they just turn a round head with some gib slots and instead of turning the profile into the uh, body, the body is just basically straight and what they do is they cut what they call a backer plate and I think that backer plate is probably about a quarter inch thick and that backer plate represents the body profile and what that does that supports the tip so if you want a multi profile style and rail set basically is you buy the heads and then you just have different backer plates for different profiles pretty unique way um, there was a company out there called um, Peterson Machinery they were located up in uh, uh, the Twin Cities of Minnesota and they were specifically having tooling made for them and it was sold underneath the name Precision Edge now that I've heard that Acme Tools has bought uh, Peterson Machinery Company they're still offering the Precision Edge tooling and basically they've taken a bunch of stock profiles again they've taken the exact same principle so um, tooling is readily available this is just a door edge cutter and I wanted to show you this what's kind of so, so unique about this you can see here it's got four inserts let me see if I can show this on camera right if you look at this one here this inserts leaning this way but if you turn this one here this inserts leaning this way so there's a forward there, there's a backward and a forward cut and basically what it is it's a shearing action to eliminate chipping so uh, I've run this one a few times, I've run a bunch of trim with it, and I have to say I can run this at about 5,000 RPMs at 26 feet per minute, and I get a very, very clean cut. So, Okay, so that's the, the dimensions in tooling, and like I said, this is dedicated profile. They do make, like I said, multi-profile um, heads to use with different types of, of inserts and profiles. If I'm not mistaken, the head that they use for styles and rails is also the same head that they'd use for a door edge or, or some type of an edge like this here. Uh, it's just that they changed the backer plate. So really, if you wanted to save money uh, and you weren't really about setup time, you could just buy a couple heads and all you do is change the backer plates and inserts. But I, I prefer to have dedicated heads or dedicated bodies to specific profiles. Um, I've got a new... Um, head coming from them right now where they've actually taken their multi-profile raised panel head and they've modified these inserts and basically uh, let's see if how you're going to see this I wanted them to take this profile and I asked them to remove the radius 
and change this angle from a 20 degree to a 5 degree and have this kind of a square corner and then I wanted a matching drawer for it. and after a few drawings and a few phone conversations I've got drawings to them that were that I approved so every time they make a profile change they laser etch that into the uh, inserts and then if you order a head, a, a stock head, or I'm sorry, a custom head, they'll laser etch into the head as well so you know which tips go with what. Um, but, yeah. So, raised panel head, door edge, cope, and stick. Alright, so let me show you the tooling that I used to use that I'm slowly phasing out on. Okay, so these are the style and rail cutters or the coping stick cutters. This is the coping cutter, this is the sticking cutter. Um, basically, it's a multi profile design. These heads are from LRH Enterprises. I've had these for the last uh, probably 12 or 13 years. I've got a lot of use out of them, but they've never really run smooth from day one. And after talking with the manufacturer from the other tooling, uh, commenting about how smooth they run, they're basically telling me that it's all in the bore. Um, if they bore them out too big, um, they're just basically when you put it on the cutter, you have a little sideways slop and then you have some excess of run out on the rim. So, um, not a really good idea. The other thing I've noticed is that ever since I wasn't able to get LRH tips anymore because LRH Enterprises went out of business, is that whoever has been making the tips, there's a few different manufacturers out there, they're being cut very sloppy and the joints are very sloppy they clamp up and they glue up okay but they just don't fit very properly and it kind of makes me wonder as far as a risk for failure um, later on the field but I always do make sure that I do get plenty of glue in them but um, as you can see these heads are a little bit smaller but I grab the dimensions head and here is the uh, LRH head. As you can see here, the LRH head outside diameter is about the same as the minor diameter of the dimensions and tooling head. And that could more so be a uh, preference to the company that used to run this tooling. But talking with the manufactured dimensions and tooling, uh, they, they really um, like to run that larger diameter just for a simple reason. It cuts cleaner, it runs smoother and uh, you don't have to run at such a high RPM either so here's kind of a, a side by side comparison of what I used to use and what I'm using now the only disadvantage is, is that like I said this one here would support five profiles because this is a dedicated body it only supports a specific profile I can modify the profile within reason. A nice thing about it is I can call the manufacturer up and I can say, hey, I've got head number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and I'm using tips one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, I want to make a slight change to that. And they're more than willing to do that. And what to do is they'll reassign it a um, a new number. So it's um, it's actually a really neat deal and they work directly with the end with the end uh, user so it's really kind of a, a neat idea so alright so that's the two different style rail heads now this is my standard door edge cutter which I'm still using yet I don't know I'll phase it out eventually but uh, this one runs pretty good for the most part um, it's a precision steel head again and it's a multi-profile but this one here only supports probably about three different profiles and I only use this particular profile nothing really too special about it um, the minor diameter on this one here is about three and a half uh, it's just that it fits in my Delta Rockwell uh, HD shaper without having to modify the insert um, so I mean yeah it, it does work for it. it runs pretty smooth for the most part I mean there's some weight here as well just like the other brands so the last I have here is my raised panel head which I'm still using occasionally but will be phasing out as well. Um, this is a aluminum head. Um, not really sure as far as the, the gain out of aluminum for a raised panel. Um, I'm thinking they're maybe thinking that it will absorb some of the vibration but at the same time um, I've always been a big believer in a steel head because you get more momentum, more, more momentum there. Say that three times fast. Um, this head too doesn't run very smooth and again it's all in the bore. So um, 
this is a multi-profile head as well. Um, basically, it supports five different profiles for a 5 8 inch panel. And once again, uh, this is an LRH brand as well. Inserts are not available from LRH, but there are other manufacturers that are cutting them. And the one thing about these tips for the raised panel, the door edge, and the style rails, these tips are a little less than $30 a piece, but figure $30 or like $29 something. So you have $30 times 3, which is 90, another $30 times 3, which is 180. So you got $180 just for style and rail tips. Door edge, same thing, 30, 30, or 30, 60, 90. And the raised panel, I think these are a little over, but I'm going to say they're 30 again. So you're looking at $30 a tip versus dimensions less than twenty dollars a tip the door edge tips for these here uh, they're two different angles uh, once again I think they're about sixteen dollars a piece compared to thirty dollars a piece and style and rail set I'm gonna say fifteen dollars a piece it might be a little bit over but let's just say fifteen fifteen thirty forty five 15, 30, 45. 45 and 45 is 90. I get six tips for $90 versus three tips for $90. Now here's the good news. If you guys own the LRH heads and you're doing okay with it, Dimensions and Tooling can cut tips for other brand uh, cutter heads. What they do need though is they need a, a, a used tip from you and basically they will reverse engineer it so they'll basically copy and figure out what the hook angle is and get an exact copy of the profile they'll basically draw it up in their CAD they'll send it to you in an email or fax or, or USPS mail and you basically say yes I like it no I need you to tweak it and they'll tweak it for you if you need to so and to my understanding there's no charge on the, on the adjustments of the um, drawings so that's the one thing that uh, they did tell me is that don't be afraid to call if you want to make some drawings or some changes in the drawings that they don't charge for that so uh, custom tooling manufacturer at stock pricing is what they keep telling me so so anyways yeah that's the difference in tooling and I have uh, I think four other sets of, of uh, style and rail heads um, and they're all dedicated profile but I am looking at for a couple of these uh, profiles that I have here um, that I don't have in here possibly going to see if they can't make a head similar to these here in this diameter and do the uh, multi-profile head again um, I'm not really excited about the open head with the backer uh, plates because it kind of um, it's not really an anti-kickback design this is more of an anti-kickback design and you know this is to a certain extent as well. Um, basically, the way I could describe the head the most kind of reminds me of the old lock edge uh, tooling where the, the knives just stuck out. They didn't have anything really behind it. It's kind of that same principle. So that's why I think I'd like to see if they could develop me uh, a couple style and rail heads, a cope and stick head that'll basically follow these profiles. So, because there's still some in here that I really like. So, but that's uh, basically, I'll do that. Uh, when there's a need for that so I'll probably do a follow-up video once I receive that uh, custom tooling I had ordered which is basically uh, replacement tips for this here with some minor changes uh, still supported in this head and then uh, the other one is the uh, new multi-profile raised panel head with a um, scaled down version of this head for five piece drawer fronts so um, and that's the other thing too is I don't know if I mentioned it earlier but if you have bought something from them or you have a uh, a model number of the insert or head and you want to make some changes to those inserts they can pull that drawing up and say um, yep I can make this change or no I can't make that change we have to make you a new head but this one here like I said they're able to accommodate the changes and still use the same head so alright guys I hope you found this video kind of helpful I know it's something a little bit different but this is kind of really more for the serious uh, cabinet maker slash woodworker um, who uses shaper cutters and it has a little bit of investment in it. Um, I would highly recommend these guys. They're called Dimensions and Tooling. 
They're located in Granger, Indiana. It's a small shop, probably less than 20 people. I think they told me around uh, 14, 15 people. And uh, they've been going for probably 20 some years, maybe a little bit longer, I'm not sure. Uh, I've actually even talked to the owner already when I first started redesigning the raised panel tips for this one. So very down to earth people. So, all right guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Questions and co positive comments are welcome. Thanks for watching.